Hello beautiful tea mines. Welcome back to the tea crane. Today I have some beautiful teaware here with me which are again from Nakao Munehiro. I went to visit them again a few weeks ago and again I discovered some amazing wares. We've got these new tea bowls and this new gaiwan and I'd like to introduce you to some of the stories that he told me about them and some of the things that I just find so amazing about them. So Nakao-san told me that he used to study pottery at several different kilns throughout Japan. And one of the kilns that he studied at is the Akahada kiln in Nara. Akahada is famous for this whitish glaze. And as you can see with most of the wares that he makes, including also his teacups, teapots, uh, just as with this Gaiwan, he has a very unique style that is based on the Akahada style and he uses the same glaze and techniques as um, as what he learned there now when putting a glaze on a tea bowl it is not possible to put the glaze on without having a spot where the glaze does not get on you need to hold the bowl somewhere in order to put it in the bucket with glaze and so there's always going to be a spot that does not have the glaze on it. And there are different techniques to mask it away or to cover it. But traditionally, people would not really cover it up and just leave it as is because that is the way these things are made. And now these two tea bowls are very interesting because they look rather similar. They're made in the same style with this band on the outside, the, the brownish, um, clay and um, thick white Akahara glaze on it. But what makes them so different is here where you can see how the potter has held his tea bowl. So for example, on the foot on this tea bowl, you see here the marks of his fingers after where the tea bowl was held to put it in the glaze and to get the glaze evenly on the entire surface. With this bowl, the mark is not on the foot, but it is on the side. This is where the potter has put his thumb and on the outside his forefinger and this perfectly covers these two places that are without glaze. And when I met Nakao-san and he told me about these bowls, he informed me that this holding it like this is the traditional way how it is done at the Akahada kiln. And this is the more contemporary way where putting the glaze on in a way that is not as obvious. So keeping it on the bottom, on the foot, is something that is more in line with the contemporary appeal. Whereas doing it on a place where it is visible is more of an antique-ish ideal. And so he found it interesting to practice these both styles and to, and, and he actually kept these bowls as well. And now we have access to them. These bowls are available on the tea crane for sale and he doesn't have any more. He has made them for himself basically to get an idea of these different styles and to keep his practice, but he does not favor making tea bowls so much. He likes to make teaware, like this beautiful gaiwan, which I will introduce in a moment. But the tea bowls that he makes, we've had two very interesting, very beautiful tea bowls again. You have these two, but unless he says he gets access to a wood firing kiln, he's not intending to make another batch of tea bowls. And so I would actually very much like for him to find um, a wood firing kiln because that would allow us to introduce you to more tea balls made by him and they are amazing. But these two are very unique and if you are interested or would like to acquire one, they will be available for a limited time on the T-Crane website. We will include the link in the description so you can see 
where you can get them. And now I would also to conclude, like to introduce you to this beautiful Gaiwan because he likes to make these very, very beautiful teaware uh, items like Kyusu, he makes interesting Kyusu cups um, and Gaiwan. And he has this, on this Gaiwan, he's used his inter interesting style where he has these cutouts around the rim. This gives it a little bit of a floral pattern and makes it look like, um, well, it's, it's a design element. It is not necessarily functional, but it makes the piece unique. And he likes to play around with these uh, things as well and to experiment. And so as long as he can keep experimenting, he says he can bring up the passion to continue making teaware and find new interesting things to um, introduce to his customers. So. If you like working with a guy one, it's a tiny one. It's good for a one person portion. I like using it as well. And the guy one will also be available on the tea crane. The pieces are individual pieces. So we have one of each and once they're gone, they're gone. So um, if you are interested, maybe by the time you've watched this video, these pieces might already be gone. But if you're quick or if you're lucky, they might still be there. So click the link in the description, have a look at pictures that I also have on the, on the website. And I'm sure they will make a beautiful addition to your tea collection. So head over to the tea crane. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button. Uh, also click the subscribe button so you get updated on new videos in the future. And I hope to see you here again very soon. For the time being, create your silence.